Hello, and welcome back to my channel where I do whatever I want whenever I want to, and today, <laughs> I've done this. This has been one beefy, beefy project, so let me walk you through it all. The 1.19 snapshots have been so much fun. So I had a little testing world here because I was looking at all the blocks and I was looking at the stuff that people have made with them and so many people have made these, you know, swampy, mangrovey, rundown looking sorts of things. And I wanted to make something a little more like this, a little more steampunkish. So you'll see a room like this, very similar to this, in what I'm about to show you. This was my little test run for it. If you don't know, I use a lot of League of Legends creator safe songs in my videos. The Political SMP series. The Nearcraft series. Is he, are you actually AFK? Hello. I think he might be. I listen to this music every once in a while and just think, you know, what could I use it in? And I was listening to this song. And I promise this is not sponsored. I just enjoy this music. But when I listened to this song, I was like, wow, I, I have a vision. And the vision was a giant wheel that a bunch of people live in. And it rolls around, like this giant rolling wheel. and. Obviously, this is Minecraft. I cannot make the wheel roll. You just have to use your imagination a little bit. But I wanted to do something like this. So this was my first test run, and I imagined this as part of the wheel, and it would be this giant circle, you know, and this would be part of something along the side of it sticking off. I did all these tests to figure out, uh, oh, that just grew. This just grew? Where did it grow from? Anyways, I was just messing around in here to figure out what they would look good with, like I was trying to compare textures in here and all sorts of stuff so that I could prepare for the build. And um, thank goodness I did because a lot of times I have the tendency to just start building without planning too much and this is way too big of a build to do that with. So let me take you back to the circle, the wheel, the thing. I don't have a name for it. Speaking of which, give me names in the comments down below. Would love to see them. So back to... Hello, back to this. <laughs> Let me take you through some of the stages of building this because it's really pretty cool. I use this pixel generator, this pixel circle generator to tell me how to build these circles because I've never built circles this big in Minecraft and I needed to get the dimensions right. So I built the outer one, the inner one, and then the inner inner one that has the, I guess you would call it the main structure of this. And I planned a lot of this out with wool and then made sure that I got the shapes the way that I wanted them. And then I went in and filled it in with the mangrove wood. And then I went in and detailed it and did the interiors. It was quite a process. Let me actually look at the statistics and see how long I've been in this world. Time played, 1.57 days. That is almost 38 hours. I've been in here for almost 38 hours doing this. Now, before I forget to say this, this world is going to be available for download for a dollar on Patreon. I looked at a few different places where I could put downloads and that's the best one that I found. I don't wanna charge people a lot of money. That's not the goal here. I wanted a secure way to allow people to download this and Patreon seemed like a good a good option. So if any of you have any other suggestions for how to go about that or any alternate ideas, do let me know. But if you do click the link and do the $1 tier, all these eggs, <laughs> you do the $1 tier, uh, you will not only get this, but you will get access to whatever other maps I upload there in the near future. At the time of this video, this will be available and the Hermitcraft season eight map, which if you're new here, I've done a bunch, well not a bunch, I've done three. <laughs> I've done three videos in there. Uh, so it will go through the changes I made to Green's base, to the Big Eye Shopping Crew and Fifi's Cave part one, which yes, part two is still coming. It's just, it's taking a minute and also I got bored of it, so I took a break. But it'll, it'll be here, I promise. Anyways, so 
let me take you through some small exterior details first. I added some treads in the background, obviously not that far, but like, you know, to make it look like, oh, these are the marks that it's left as it's rolled around. And you can imagine it just chugging its way that way through the landscape. It's really cool. I also, under the same logic of, you know, it moving in that direction, there's the puff of smoke blowing this way. There's little roots dangling down that are also all blowing that way. Let me back up a minute. The idea is that this deep slate wheel in the center spins this way. And so these copper and mud rods are also spinning this way. And this circle and this circle are also all spinning this way. Those are all moving, but the thing in the middle is staying stationary right there. It's not spinning. It's staying upright in the position that it's in. And then these things on the side that have these little deep slate attachments are also not moving. So the idea here is that there's, there's these wheels that are gripping onto this wheel. And so they're staying stationary as the wheel slides through these little grips. And if you look at the spokes of the wheel, they open up here on the ends to pass around these little attachment bits. So this entire wheel is moving around. These bits are staying stationary, but these, these three circles here that are on this inner wheel, they're also spinning. And these are platforms that allow people to move from place to place in the wheel. This circle here, right now, it's on this, this dock. And so as it passes here, people would be able to hop onto here or they would be able to hop off here and into here. And here you can get a little sneak peek at an interior. Not too fancy in here, but something, something. And then this wheel, as the giant wheel village rolls this way, this inner wheel will spin. And where it is attached to this circle, the circle will spin with it. This, this circle platform, I don't know what names to call these. Uh, you know what, we'll call these the elevators. This is gonna be an elevator because that's, that's basically what it is, right? So this whole thing, the circle and the two platforms extending from it, this elevator thing is gonna move this way as the wheel spins this way. And so then it's gonna come in contact with this platform and people can get off there. It's then going to come in contact with this platform where this one's attached right now. And then it's going to go down to this one. And then it's going to be where that one attaches. And then up there and then back to here again. And then it will also stop by the center thing on the way. So when it's attached to one of these things on the sides, it'll also attach there. I hope that this makes sense. It's kind of a complicated concept for a Minecraft build. But I just really like the idea of this circle where some parts are stationary and then some parts move around. And so people use the moving parts to navigate between the stationary parts. Also, every single 1.19 block currently released as of the day I'm recording this, which is April 20th, all of those are in this build. And we have the LA and we have the frog and we have a lot of items in here like echo shards and respawn compasses and all sorts of fancy stuff like this. So let me give you a tour. Where, where are we going to start? You know what? We're going to start in this little elevator that I already showed you the inside of. That's a perfect place. So imagine that you have hopped onto this elevator and you're waiting for your stop. You can come in here, observe the, the lovely little plant life. Uh, you could have a little seat up here as it travels. There's little windows where you could maybe maybe take a peek at the, the rolling landscape down below. And then you come out this door. And uh, we, have, we have docked on this thing. And then as the wheel continues to roll, this will move away and will no longer be docked here. But um, you just got to use your imagination, right? In the map, of course, it's permanently docked here. So this is a little a little farm storage shed. There's little wheelbarrows. There's storage stuff from the farms because, yes, this rolling village needs to eat. There are farms <laughs> that sway at the top of the village. There's little tools back here. I use the invisible item frame command here. And there's also a little, little maintenance port so you could get on top of the wheel. I'm not going to show you every little thing in here because 
if you get the map yourself, I would like for you to be able to explore and discover some stuff. So there is this incredibly rickety, like definitely not up to code bridge that goes up here. And these are the farms, these series of platforms hanging up here. So again, like these things, these have these little, um, I, I don't know what to call these either bits supporting them and so as the wheel spins these will remain stationary and the wheel will just roll between these treads so the farms stay up here permanently so we have little pigs with a bunch of mud and stuff and there's barrels strapped down this pig i've tried to get it off the ledge so many times and it refuses it is determined to test fate there and we go up here and there's cows there's sheepies, and there's a little shed with stuff, shears, shovel, hoe, don't look at that, it's not important. Yeah, little sheepies. And then over here, there's, there's chickens. So, obviously this is actually not a chicken-proof pen because they have free reign of this. Unlike the other animals that are in their own little pens, they had free reign in here, there's little chicken coops. Um, so a couple chickens did escape, ooh, forgot that little block. A couple chickens did escape and uh, they floated over the edge and they are just sitting. You know what, we might happen across one of them later. I'll tell you about it when we get there. The rest of the chickens who did not decide to jump, um, they're just in the seed trough permanently forever. Then we go up here and this is the wheat farm. Again, there's little wheelbarrows and then composty bits we go down to the end and there's a nice little little storage shed which i i use the the muddy roots as a wall here because it looks kind of like a dirty wall i like it then if we go back down here the way that we came how do i leave this way sometimes i still <laughs> i still get lost in here it's a little maze like this is the tree growing place. So obviously this can't be very efficient, but they got a tree growing here and every once in a while they chop it down and grow another one. Then we go into here. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what this is, but it's maybe my favorite room or one of my favorite rooms. It just looks really cool. And this is the one that kind of resembles the one that I showed in that little test world at the beginning. There's a lot of places in here with weird shaped rooms and weird shaped spaces or small spaces and I tried to take advantage of the height. So there's this little platform here, respawn compass there. Then we have maintenance thing, maintenance hatch and you can get onto the roof of this. Imagine being on this roof as it's rolling. Horrifying. And then we can come down here Again, more invisible item frames here for these little shelves. There's echo shards, a little desk. It looks like this place would belong to some sort of researcher studying something. I don't know what the something is, but that's what it looks like. And I really like it. Like this space just looks really cool. And then of course I use the, the packed mud here is like, you know, the bricks have crumbled a little bit. That's the idea. So let's pop out here. This would be one of the platforms where the elevator things like that right over here, it would roll this way and this would connect to here and you could hop off and continue on your ride. So let's continue downwards because I believe, yep, we've seen the entire top of this so far. So let's go to here. The inside of all of these elevator things look relatively the same. There's minor differences in them, but the same sort of gist, little sitting area up there, little walking area down here. So let's go over here. This is one of the storage buildings. So these things are all four stories tall and each of the stories is dedicated to one of the farms. So we have wool, we have wood, and we have hay, and then there's some barrels in the basement. I tried to avoid filling up too much room in here with storage, but these felt like, they look kind of like silos. These ones are a little taller, a little longer. They look kind of like a hot dog. 
<laughs> so those are storage facilities. There's one over there too. It's not too terribly different. So I'm not gonna take you in there. That elevator there, also not too terribly different. So I'm not gonna take you in there, but let's take you in here. So this building is just a little lounge space. So people can hang out down here. You can go up here and there's these kind of private booths. There's a little two person one, a four person one, and it just gives people a little bit of space to hang out, chat, maybe have a bit of food. So then if we go down here, we get to another very rickety set of stair bridge things that takes us down to here. And this is meant to be the slums. So I'm gonna be honest, none of the living conditions I've made in this village are particularly nice, but these are definitely the worst. This is underneath of the whole thing. And like the other bits on the side that I've showed you, this part is not meant to move. So it has these attachment bits and the wheel and the spokes just slide right on through it and this stays stationary. And because it's below everything, it catches the dirt and mess from everything else. So this is kind of the, the slums. There's little dead coral bits to look like dead plants and nasty stuff. And the living conditions are very cramped. So this is actually one of the larger spaces in here. Most of them are very tiny. And yeah, it's very, very messy. I'm not gonna show you the interior to all of these, but I'll give you a little, little peek around. This is what it looks like. Uh, this one I think is the biggest one. Yeah, that's, that's about as big as these get. And then there is a third level to this with a few more homes in it. I'll show you a little peek into this one. Another little example of what they look like. Yeah, uh, probably not the greatest place to live, but it was fun to build though. <laughs> And then this is the opposite side that we entered on. So now we're exiting the slums and we go up here. Feel the daylight on our skin again. And this path takes us into here. There's a little seating area down here and up here, this is meant to be a bank. So I'm just gonna break my way in. <laughs> There's just a bunch of gold stashed here and then a desk here. Also, these lighting things are all over the place. These are frog lights with mangrove trap doors around them. And I've used every type of frog light and I tried to change it up depending on what environment I'm in. So the pearlescent ones are meant to be a little fancier. And so these are the ochre ones. So not too fancy, but you know, fancy enough. Also the lichen is just meant to be lichen. The skulk, however, the skulk that is growing all over the place, because I'm sure you've seen this in some of the other rooms I've showed so far as well. We will get to it. We will get to the, the intention of the skulk here. But for now, let's continue on. Hello, this way. <laughs> I believe this is all of the outer buildings and rooms that we've seen. So now we venture into the main part. As you can see, when you get closer to the main entrance, the little skulk growths get bolder. So this is what it looks like when you come inside. So these things in the middle are meant to not turn with the rest of the building. So as these churn this way and roll the village onwards, this stays stationary. Although you have to imagine it would wobble quite a bit. I wanna see if I can find one of the chickens. Oop, there's, yes, <laughs> this is where. They fell too. So the farms are way up there at the top. You can see the little bits where they attach right there, right there. The chickens just fell down here. So I think there's more here as well. It's like a free egg service. A lot of times when I pass through these little parts, I just get eggs delivered to me. So we go up first and this is going to take us to these storage places. So there's three levels of this. And they all look pretty much the same, so I'm not gonna bother to show you the top two. But the end of this one is a little bit different. So this is gonna take you out here. <laughs> you can see the little, little skull things reacting. And this is the other entrance. There are on the back and bottom of this thing, these big things, these big tubes, vents, puffing out smoke, but that is not what powers it. We will get to what those are later. What powers it are these. 
They pick up the sound, release this energy, and that allows the wheel to turn. So these chambers power the gears that turn these wheels and push the city forwards. So back in here, we're going to go back down these ladders, past the main entrance where we came in, and downwards. Here's another one of these skulk bits. <laughs> there's a little maintenance entrance in here, and there's all these crazy pipes suspended from the ceiling. And you can see there is a bunch of skulk growth around this place. And my thinking here was that they're using this to power the machine, but it's also kind of taking over their machine over time, and it continues to spread more and more throughout the wheel. And who knows what will happen because of that one day. I will leave that part up to you to decide. But yeah, here's another power place. And then if we go down further, you can see what those giant tubes puffing out smoke are. This is the trash dump. So these steaming entrances here are where everything's being burnt up and pumped out the back. So they burn all of it and they just pump it out into the air not very green of them. On to the rest of this thing, because this is just the center. There's a west part and an east part. Let's start in the west. Sure, there's no rhyme or reason to this, but this is a perfect place to start. This is a little library. And I think I will let you explore a little more of this yourself if you decide to get the map, but it's, it's very cute. It's very eclectic. There's a little little upper pathway here that goes through part of it. I like it a lot. And then out here, there's just some odds and ends. There's a weird little bookshelf, barrel shelf thing. And yeah, <laughs> then there's a, a maintenance exit here that can I get out? Yeah, uh, it doesn't actually go particularly anywhere. It just goes down. And I wanted to show you a few things on the outside while I was out here though. These parts here are meant to be where they have replaced parts of the building that have fallen apart. So I guess it could be copper, but I didn't want to use the copper blocks. I wanted to do something a little bit different because I already have copper blocks here and I have copper blocks here. These are big anchors and I will show you little switches for them on the inside, but when the city stops rolling, these anchors descend and plunge into the ground to keep it steady and stable and to not let it roll anymore, even when the machines inside are turned off. And then there's other little odds and ends sticking out of here, and we will get to those later as we come to them. But for now, let's hop back inside. Ooh, also, one other thing I almost forgot. There's a bunch of extra skulk around these parts that were replaced, especially around the edges of them. So. Could that mean that these got got eaten, eaten by the skulk stuff and fell off and they had to be replaced? Maybe, maybe. Let's go down to the hospital. The hospital is a cool little place. So not only is it a hospital, but it is also a laboratory of sorts. There is an allay up in here and it is name tagged, so it should not despawn. There's strange little laboratory things. There's a weird little minecart track. And then there's a couple little frogs in here just having a grand old time by themselves. The hospital part of the hospital is below the laboratory. And we have a bunch of hospital beds. You can see the inside of part of the place that was uh, replaced, which I think looks really cool. And I like that it also does still contrast against the actual oxidizing copper here. So let's continue upstairs. There's two sets of apartments. There's an east set and a west set. This is one of the switches that connects to the anchor. So the idea is, you know, were this not vanilla Minecraft and things like this could actually work, uh, you could switch this lever and that anchor would plummet down to the ground and stop the village. Remember, before we look into any of these, what the slums looked like, right? So keep that in mind. I know none of these are the nicest places, but you do what you got to do. So these parts of the building, as you've seen, they're they're only four blocks across. So I've had to make do with this tiny amount of space, which was intentional. I could have made it broader, but 
I wanted to try to work in these small spaces and see what I could do. So a lot of these apartments are just two blocks wide and I tried to see what I could fit in here. And like with so much of the rest of this, I'm not gonna show you every little thing, but I'll show you some that stand out to me. So this one is a cool one. Floor three of the apartments, room 302 West. First of all, there's part of the wall that's broken down, been replaced with these bricks. And then you come in here, and this is one of the things that is jutting off the side. Can I, can I get out here maybe? Maybe, maybe. Let me just, um, perfect. So you can see it right here, hanging off the side. And this is part of this lucky person's apartment uh, who has happened to get a lot more space than most of the rest of these people. Wait, not survival. No, no, no. There we go. Yeah, so this is like a little, little seating space, a little dining area just hanging off the side of the building, which I really like. And I did try to vary up what's in these. So like this one has a set of beds and a stove. Then you go into this apartment and it has a stove and a desk and a smaller bed. So they have little variations of what's inside so that each and every one of them is unique. Now let's make our way back down the stairs. And we are going to go from, what was this, the west side? Yes, we're gonna go from the west side to the east side and I've gotten more eggs delivered to me. All right, so in here, there's a small little library, not as big as the one on the other side, but it's cute. There's a strange little thing jutting off here. I just, I like to stand in places like this and imagine what it would be like if it was rolling and you see the landscape just passing by you. I think it's really cool. So where should we go first? Let's go here. This is a kitchen. So on this side, we have the eatery places. This is meant to be a fridge freezer sort of thing to keep things cool, an ice box, if you will. And then there's a bunch of stoves and ovens and food being made. And then if we go downstairs, we get to this, which is a big old cafeteria. So on the top part here, there's another little balcony sort of thing that juts off this. And this is facing to the front of the wheel. And then down here, there is the cafeteria. And there's a bunch of food up here. I love this little trick of putting food that can be cooked on unlit campfires. I think it's so cool. There's also an absurd number of paintings in this room. Try not to go too overboard with the paintings because they can look a little weird and garish, but I just think that in some of these rooms, it's just eclectic enough to work. And if we go back up here and continue up these stairs, we get to the other sets of apartments. And there's a couple up here that I'd like to show you. Again, most of them are still pretty small, pretty normal ones like this. Occasionally they do have a window. Not all of them have a window, but some of them do. And if I remember right, only the ones on this side can even have a window because I think the ones on the other side are facing inwards. So they don't have the option for a window. And yeah, like this is a little bit of a bigger one. The bed here is cordoned off from the rest of it. There's a little bookshelf thing. I like it. And this one even has a little, little cabinet closet thing here at the end. But let's go a little further up. We're only on floor two and there's four of these. So on this floor, as we go up, the rooms get a little bit bigger. So this one's not too remarkable, right? But this one, definitely bigger. And it has this cool thing kind of like the other room did, but set up a little bit differently. So it looks like this, hanging off the side here. And there's a little divider here, separating some of the sleeping space from the, the living space. And then there's one more floor on this side. So before we go up here, all these rooms are labeled floor level. So this is level three and then room number. And then if it's east or west, but up here, this one is just room 400 because there is only one room 400. The other side, the west side has 401 and 402, I think, but this is 400. Little cleaning closet, nothing special there. And then this is where I would imagine the ruler of the city lives because it is the biggest and nicest room. And if you notice, it is devoid of lichen and skulk growths. It's way cleaner than the rest of them. Has a way fancier door. 
this nice little bookshelf thing, and then a completely separate bedroom, which nothing else in here has a completely separate bedroom like this. This is the only one. Although still pretty sad to think that this is the nicest place to live in this whole thing. Really cool concept, maybe not the nicest uh, existence in life, right? Adventurous, but uh, not very comfortable. And I think, I think that that's pretty much everything. Oh, I have another egg. <laughs> that is the city, the rolling city. The only notable 1.19 thing it's missing is the warden mob itself, which I didn't really think that that would fit into this very well. So I left it out, but uh, I will be doing something else with the warden soon. So stay tuned. Anyhow, if you enjoyed this, and believe the video deserved it, then please do give it a like and subscribe, share, all of those good things it would be much appreciated. I will do creative big builds like this occasionally, like the Hermitcraft builds and this one, which will, as I said before, be available for $1 on Patreon, link in the description. And I also do survival multiplayer servers. So, I have one right now called Nearcraft. Link below and at the end of this video if you would like to go check it out. It's a lot of fun. We're all living together on one big continent. So if you like watching that sort of thing, then go ahead and, and click the video. And I hope that you enjoy. And if you do get the map and explore it a little bit, please do let me know what you find because I would love to hear what you discover or what you think about it, or if you take this and you add something to it and make it your own, I would absolutely love to see it. So, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.